Alors, euh, donc, euh, bienvenue au séminaire de mathématiques physiques. Aujourd'hui, nous avons le plaisir d'accueillir euh, James euh, Moran, qui est euh, étudiant au doctorat au département de physique de l'Université de Montréal, sous ma supervision. Alors, euh, tout de suite, je vais lui donner la parole. Euh, James, à toi. OK. All right. Thank you. Um, OK, so today, I'm going to talk about a construction of coherent states for the 2-1 anisotropic oscillator. And to give a, an overview of the things I'll talk about, at first I'll talk about degeneracy in, uh, the degeneracy in the spectrum and coherent states in one dimension and generalizations of these coherent states and the problems that degeneracy in the spectrum introduces in the formalism. Next, next, I will apply some of this discussion to the 2D isotropic harmonic oscillator, which has a well-known degeneracy. Um, and we can use these principles to construct ladder operators for the two to ladder operators to suitably count degenerate states. And we'll show that we can resolve the identity with these states. And then lastly, the, well, not lastly, but the, the main point of this is to apply this to the 2-1 anisotropic oscillator to construct a type of coherent states for the 2-1 oscillator, which has ladder operators and many chains of states, but we find that we need to introduce nonlinear ladder operators to generate these states. So I'll, begin just by talking about the one dimensional oscillator. So in terms of its creation and annihilation operators, they satisfy a canonical commutation relation. And I haven't written down the differential realization of these operators, but the Hamiltonian may be factorized according to this. And the energy eigenvalues are linear in the quantum number n. Um, and clearly these energy levels are non-degenerate. So En does not equal En for N not equal to En. And in fact, normalizable bound states in one dimension are never degenerate. So that's just a brief overview. Um, next, I'll talk about coherent states for the one dimensional oscillator. And most famously, these are the glauber sudershan coherent states. Um, and there are three equivalent ways of writing them down. They can be written down as the eigenstate of the annihilation operator of the harmonic oscillator, or a unitary displacement operator acting on the vacuum, or both of these, when represented, represented in terms of the Fox states, become an infinite expansion over the Fox states where um, each energy eigenstate is weighted by this coefficient Zn over the square root of n factorial. Um, and it's also worth mentioning that these states are minimal uncertainty states and they, uh, the uncertainties are equal, the dispersion's equal in their momentum and their position. And so we'll focus on this talk uh, of generalizations of the state of the form three here, where um, we, we, we encounter problems when states the states n include degeneracy. And so a, a defining property of many generalized coherent states is that they resolve the identity. And so we can find a measure for which this continuous parameter z is integrated over, where d2z refers to the integration of the imaginary and the real part of z. And they form an overcomplete basis for the Hilbert space. Um, they are overcomplete in the sense that um, two coherent states, Z and say W, have a non-zero overlap. Um, but as I'll show, um, properties like this become a little more uh, problematic when the states include degeneracy. And so let's take, for example, a a type of generalized coherent state introduced by Clouder. Um, these extend 
the Fock expanded form of the one dimensional coherent states I mentioned in the previous slide. Um, by generalizing the coefficients that appear in front of them. So this psi is related to, is a complex parameter whose, um, whose phase depends on the energy. And gamma here is a real parameter and this function m of psi squared is chosen to normalize these states. And in general, these rho n are given as solutions to the moment equation in this line, but in principle, they're often chosen to be just the product of the energies in whichever spectrum. And, and n here refers to any. An equation has an equal sign in it. What's the other side? Uh, sorry, where? Where do you mean? Your moment equation isn't an equation, it's an expression for an integral. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have said rho n equals this. Rho n equals this expression. I, I missed that. Sorry. Um, and so under certain circumstances, these these states reduce to the glauber sudershan coherent states if we take these limits. And so uh, convenience of the construction of generalized coherent states like this is that they resolve the identity by definition. So we integration over this measure mu is defined in the following way where we integrate over the uh, so radial part of psi and then over its phase in this this way. Um, and we'll see that it, we see that if we have some spectrum which is appropriately organized where e naught is smaller than e1, smaller than e2, up to ek where k can be finite or infinite, we'll find phase integrations which are of the form here. Um, where which these should return delta functions or Kronecker deltas in N and N. But this is only true if these states are not degenerate. If there exist states En equal to Em for N not equal to M, this identity will break down and we will lose the resolution of the identity. And so to cure this, we need to treat degenerate states differently to non-degenerate states. And so in some sense, we, we need to average over the degenerate contributions. Um, so there are, there are two ways we can think about doing this. So we, we need to somehow take superpositions of degenerate states and define some average contribution to um, a given degenerate energy level. And we, we can do this in principle however we, however we want. We can take an equiprobable distribution or otherwise. But if we, if we understand the degeneracy a bit better and we can predict it and has a known symmetry group, we can actually go one step further and construct ladder operators which pick out these states for us and also define a natural set of coefficients which appear in front of the degenerate contributions. And so in the case of the oscillator, we approach this problem in the second way. Now, to, to give an example of how this works in the isotropic harmonic oscillator, we, we have the fo following Hamiltonian where the A's and B's do not commute and the commutation relation of A minus and A plus is one and similarly for B minus B plus. And so, the spectrum in terms of the quantum numbers n and m is given by this equation, E n m. And the, the issue with, well, the, the problem to count these is to find some number nu, which is equal to n plus m, and then arrange this number nu in increasing order from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And so we can do that fairly simply. We can look at the states that contribute to a a given value of nu. So the only non-degenerate state is the ground state and this corresponds to the state zero, zero. And then for a state with a total number one, we can have one, zero and zero, one. And then for the state two, we can have two, zero, one, one, zero, two. And for a general state val with value nu, it's, this, it's the set of nu plus one states of the form k nu minus k. 
And so to actually connect these states, so, so we, we want to construct an operator which takes us down this set of states. Um, and we can, we can do this by observation, just by noticing that if we define some operator as a linear combination of A plus and B plus, this correctly picks out the states that we want. And we can define A minus as its Hermitian conjugate. And then we can generate a set of states um, by acting on the ground state new times, and then we normalize with this new factorial term. And then we recover precisely the SU2 coherent states in the Schwinger boson representation. And where we, we, we also introduce this normalization here. Um, and these are, these are well-known coherent states in the literature, and they, their probability densities correspond to ellipses. Um, and so they, they, they're also coherent states in the sense that um, their probability distributions concentrate on the spatial distributions of their classical counterpart because coherent states are considered classical in some sense because they minimize the uh, uncertainty relation and have correspondence with the classical oscillator while these have some correspondence with the classical behavior of the isotropic two-dimensional oscillator so we recover ellipses in their spatial probability distribution and these states can be generated in a laboratory i think in a fairly straightforward way by the action of a 50-50 beam splitter on a, an input state with n photon or new photons in one mode and the vacuum in the other. So these are, these are well understood. And in this case, when we define the operators A minus and A plus as just simple combinations of A plus and B plus, we, we also end up preserving the canonical commutation relations. And so everything more or less mimics uh, the results we have just for the one dimensional oscillator, um, which is convenient, but perhaps not a coincidence. Um, and furthermore, we were talking about the resolution of the identity, the states do resolve the identity. So we are, because they are finite dimensional representations, we can resolve the identity on the new subspace. So the space with a total number new, according to this top relation. And then to recover the identity operator on the entire Hilbert space, we just sum over uh, all of new. And so this new just partitions the space in a, in a certain way. And yeah, so the, these states resolve the identity. So we, we address the degeneracy by, rather than choosing some coefficients to average these degenerate contributions, we chose some ladder operators which did this for us. And these happen to produce, well, these produce the SE2 coherent states, which, which are well known and um, well understood. And so, Yes, yeah, so, and then they have their correspondence with the classical case. And so the, 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 the main part of the talk here is now to apply this to the, the two one oscillator. And so in the, in, the, in the case of the two one oscillator, it's not as straightforward to uh, take these combinations. These combinations aren't as, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, we can't take as, as straightforward a combination of A pluses and B pluses to produce a set of non-degenerate states. So we have to be, be a little more careful with it. And so we, in, if we introduce with the following notation, the, the two one anisotropic oscillator. And so the, 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 the frequency in its A mode is twice that of its B mode. Um, and we introduce these definitions here. So we, we retain that the commutators are equal to the identity, but then at the expense of introducing a two here in the Hamiltonian and also here with its commutator with the Hamiltonian. 
But other than that, these, these act on the basis, energy eigenbasis in the conventional way. Um, and so again, we can look at the degeneracy problem and we can just by hand look at the states which contribute to given degenerate en energy levels. And we can see that the, the, there is a pattern, but it is different. And so we need to find this number nu, which is equal to 2n plus m. And we can write down all of the states that for different values of nu from zero to any value nu. So the first state is zero, zero. The second state is zero, one. The third state is, third states can be one, zero or zero, two, because here um, the, the frequency of the A mode is so twice that of the B mode. So one A boson is worth two B bosons and, and so on. And so a general expression for any new, whether it's even or odd, is given by, given by this set here, where this is the floor function or the integer part of uh, new divided by two. And so the, the symmetry algebra of these degenerate energy levels is well, well understood. And this splits into two copies of the degeneracy, degeneracy we saw for the uh, isotropic case. So if we, we consider, for example, just the even, even values of nu, this is, has degeneracy one, then this has degeneracy two, and so on and so forth. And so this splits into two copies of the, uh, uh, the degeneracy of the isotropic oscillator. And, and this, is a, this is a more general result. So for the uh, P1 oscillator, where whose frequency in, let's say, the A mode is P times that of the B mode, this will split into P copies of U2 degeneracy. But, but we are interested in constructing operators which take us from, just take us down this set of, down this chain of states. And so the simplest example of an operator which serves this purpose, it seems to be here, this A plus. So the difference here is we have a, a nonlinear term which is multiplied by this coefficient beta here. And it, it seems necessary to introduce some sort of non-linearity uh, to connect these states. And of course, th there's no unique way of doing this because we can arbitrarily multiply by number operators and square roots of number operators and other combinations of A's and B's, which will still count the states. but. It, it seems that the simplest extension of the principles we, we, we showed for the isotropic case would be to use these operators. And as well, while the canonical commutation, well, the, the commutation relation between A minus and A plus is no longer canonical, they, these operators still preserve um, their a, a generalized sense of their, their commutation relation with, with the Hamiltonian. So, this is what we'd expect from a ladder operator and its commutation is commutator with the Hamiltonian. So they do preserve some of it, but we, we, we do have to, we do lose, unfortunately, the canonical commutation relation. Okay, and so another byproduct of this is that we can, we can take, for example, A plus to the new, apply it to the ground state and develop a a chain of states, but it can be shown that A minus does not act properly as a lowering operator on the same chain of states. And so while we can build the states with A plus, we, we cannot go down them with A minus. And so to that end, it seems convenient to, or it seems sensible to categorize all of the zero modes of A minus, and this will, define the beginnings of uh, the chains of states that I mentioned we'd find earlier. So if we expand some zero mode in, in the basis of uh, degenerate contributions we found from the table earlier. So I, if I define some nth zero mode by this expression where clearly n corresponding to zero returns just the 
oscillator ground state. We can categorize all zero modes in this basis of A minus. And in doing so, we, we find a recursion relation on the coefficients gamma j. Oh, so actually I should say we're, we're restricting, well, we consider here an even value of n, so we can simplify this uh, floor function. We consider n even equal to 2n, 2n primed. And we develop this recursion relation, which can be solved fairly easily by this product. And, and it has a closed form given by this bottom equation here. And here j takes values from zero to up to m prime. And then, so yeah, so I, I recapitulate this here. So we, well, I, I don't include it, but we, we can repeat the calculation for odd values of n in this index, and we find that they vanish. Um, so this, then we also include a normalization, and we say that the normalized zero modes of this operator um, are given by these expressions where the coefficients we computed before are given by this. Um, and clearly, again, just to remind that n equals zero does correspond to the uh, two-dimensional oscillator ground state uh, zero, zero. And next, we, to construct the chains of states, we define them, the chains of states developed from each zero mode by the successive action of A plus on the state. So we take A plus to the nth power and act on each zero mode. And this will define the states that we're interested in. And this is another point where the, the, the problem isn't as straightforward as, as, it, as it is for the isotropic oscillator. We, we have, um, we can't just take a binomial expansion here because these operators are non-commuting. Fortunately, the non-commutativity of these two operators isn't so bad and the nested commutators do eventually return zero, well, quite quickly. Um, and there exist theorems on non-commuting binomial expansions as well as norm normal ordering of the exponentials of bosonic operators um, from which we can define a generating function. So there are equivalent ways of doing this. And uh, another thing worth mentioning about uh, choosing the simplest form of A plus we can, th th this problem is considerably harder when these the commutation relation between this, let's call this A, or let's call this uh, X and this Y, when the commutation relation between X and Y is more complicated, finding a normal ordered expansion of the nth power of this operator is considerably more difficult. But nevertheless, for, for this operator, we can find a nice closed form for it. And we can find that the nth power is given by this expression here. Um, and we already see that it has a, a nice form and reminiscent of the considerations we've already made where the floor function of nu over, over two appears naturally in the uh, upper limit of the outermost summation. Um, and so this is promising. And so then we define some chains of unnormalized states because we'll, we'll fix the normalization after just by act, acting on the nth zero mode new times. And in doing so, we get a long and a, a, a bit of a messy expression, but it's a, a closed form and uh, it works. And we have this set of coefficients, which are not especially nice, but We'll consider we'll, later and soon. We'll I'll, I'll be looking just at the what I call the what we call the principal chain, which is the n equals zero chain, the, the the chain perhaps we're most interested in, which includes the oscillator ground state. But in principle, all of the chains of states are given by this formula, and so 
we define the normalized chain of states just by dividing by this normalization function, which we get from taking the inner product of this with itself. And so each, and though each chain is generated by successive action of A plus, as mentioned previously, A minus does not take us down the same chain of states. And so in general, except for two examples, A minus on the nth state in the nth chain is not proportional to the new minus one state in the nth chain. And so we can represent this pictorially by, by this diagram where here the red arrow refers to A plus and the blue arrow refers to A minus. And so if we consider, for example, the first chain of states, we, by definition, A plus defines all the states above it. But because A minus doesn't take us down to this state, we can expand the action of A minus in the basis of the states below it. So this isn't terribly convenient because in general, these states are not orthogonal, um, save for the, uh, we'll demonstrate later that the zero mode, which is, for example, here, um, that the lowest, the lowest state in any column corresponds to the zero mode is always orthogonal to its corresponding state in the first chain. And um, so there are some simplifications, but admittedly not too many. And so this is how these op operators act in the first chain. And similarly, this is how these operators act in the second chain. So um, just in order to keep them all within the same space, we can just expand the action of the annihilation operator in terms of this basis. And then, of course, if we annihilate those again, they'll split into other combinations of the state below. So it's it, it's a little little bit uh, messy going down down these chains, but going up is is well defined. Um, okay, so yeah, I, I mentioned as well. So in in this uh, pictorial representation, n and nu start at zero. So the n n is equal to nu. N, n and nu equal to zero corresponds to the ground state. And so then n indexes the column that we're in, and then 2n plus nu indexes the row that we're in. And as I just mentioned, the lowest row and column being defined as the zeros. Um, yes, and we, and we only have zero modes at even values of the quantum number nu. James, you yeah. haven't put uh, red arrows in any columns beside the leftmost. So what happened if you, for example, in the left diagram, if you act with A plus on the phi zero two, would you go up? Yeah, so th that's what this right right diagram is. I, I, I didn't want to include red arrows in all of them. I thought it'd be too cluttered, okay. but. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, very good. Okay. Yeah. But there, there, there would be more the diagram for the, Five, not four, and so on, and so forth. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, sorry. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the, the states that go up are vertically above are by definition given by a plus because that's how we, we we defined them. So, but I didn't want to put all of these arrows on one diagram because I thought it'd be a bit messier. Um. Okay. So. Yeah, and to, and to make more concrete. The, the action of this A plus, we define this function f of nu in terms of these normalization functions, um, just so we can have a better idea of the action of A plus and then def define it in terms of our normalized basis. We introduce this function, uh, f of nu, and this is a generalized factorial in, in, in the index nu. Um, and the, uh, just a, a a bit of linear algebra because we cannot um, we cannot go down the chain with just using a minus. We get a combination of the chains below, and we if we want to insist on using this basis, we can find um, we can find its expansion in terms of the non-orthogonal basis 
below by inverting the gram matrix. Um, it's 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 simple enough to compute, although I suppose the answer isn't especially nice. But we we it can in principle be done, and we can define then the action. We can expand the action of a minus in terms of the states in the row below it, and then we can find these coefficients gamma k two by inverting this matrix and then computing this summation here. And now, and one simplification uh, by observation we can make to the to this matrix is that the each zero mode by chance or by by construction is orthogonal to its the state car its corresponding state in the first chain it's because we just end up with this relation and so that adds a few ze more zero entries to the gram matrix but. Uh, in general, they, they are non-orthogonal. In principle, you'd have to compute all of these in a, in a product. Um, okay. So now with, 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 with that in mind, we'll restrict, restrict our attention to the principal chain. And those are just the, the first chain or the n equals zero chain. We call it the principal chain because this is this, the chain of states which does include all states of the uh, all all states because they're, they're built from the ground state and the other states are built from higher energy zero modes and so if we restrict to the n equals zero case and we we take the n equals zero uh, limit of the formula I showed a few slides ago we we get we recover actually a, a reasonably simple form for these states in the first chain. Um, and we can, we can simplify it a little bit further just by making a, another definition where we, we absorb a factor of the square root of new factorial to just make this, this term a little, little more symmetric and a bit closer to that, of like a square root of a binomial coefficient. But of course it's not quite because this two appears here. Um, so we can, if we absorb a factor of uh, the square root of new factorial into the action of A plus, we can actually write these states uh, in the following way, where I think uh, perhaps this is a misuse of notation because I think this may have another meaning elsewhere in the literature, but for the purposes of this, we, we define this modified binomial coefficient with this subscript T to edit the binomial coefficient in, in in the following way. And we, we consider here, well, t is equal to two in our example, but presumably this is it's possible to extend this coefficient uh, for non-integer values of t. And if we, if we write it in this way um, and compare with the SU2 coherent states of the isotropic oscillator, we see a lot of similarity. Unfortunately, we couldn't, we can't um, define a, a normalization as convenient as the absolute value of alpha squared plus the absolute value of beta squared is equal to one because this isn't a binomial coefficient. So this normalization in, this isn't the uh, nth power of the alpha, alpha squared plus beta squared. But we, we see a lot of similarities in the form and clearly, the appearance of the, the factor of two, the, the fact that the uh, frequency of the A mode is twice that of the B mode appears in the upper limit of the summation and in this index that we defined below here and also in the B mode here. And so if we were to define this as just T, we could say that the SU2 coherent states are the limit as T goes to one on this expression. So it just adds a, a bit of a comparison to the isotropic states. And furthermore, we can also express this normalization function in terms of known functions. And in this case, uh, they are related to the pseudo Hermite polynomials. And the pseudo Hermite polynomials are just related to the 
conventional Hermite polynomials with these factors of i in, in its argument and an overall factor of minus i to the new on the outside, which is, is a nice result that we can write them in closed form of, of a known solution. Um, and then if we study the states in the first chain, this is actually true for states in other chains, but they're orthonormal after we've normalized them, they're orthonormal. And we can then, again, we, I, I mentioned earlier that we took another factor of the square root of new out just to make the uh, square root of new factor, just to make the comparison with the SU2 coherence states a little bit clearer. We, have a well-defined action of a plus on phi nu and it returns this coefficient times uh, phi nu plus one and so we can build this chain of states uh, in a fairly nice way and of course we, we we insisted that a minus is the hermitian conjugate of a plus um and so we saw that in in general a minus on phi nu is not proportional to phi phi nu minus one but in this case, it turns out that simply using B minus does take us down the state, does take us appropriately down the chain of states. So with, with an extra coefficient of alpha out here, but clearly B minus is not the emission conjugate of A plus, well, big A plus. Um, but in principle, we can connect all these, these states now in this chain with big A plus and B minus. And as well, uh, these states do resolve the identity. So we're, we're partitioning the space in a different way than we did for the isotropic oscillator, but they do resolve the identity with respect to this measure. And then again, we can recover the identity operator for the full Hilbert space if we sum over all these partitions new. And so these are a complete family of states and they provide a natural extension to the SU2 coherent states of the isotropic oscillator. Um, as well, we have the, a ladder operator which generates them. Um, okay, and here's, here's a comparison. So there are, there are known ANSAT states for the anisotropic oscillator, which directly generalize the uh, SU2 coherent states. So they were written down by Chen and they're just written down simply as this. There is no um, resolution of the identity or ladder operators, but they are given as a direct extension of the isotropic states. But And, and here the difference in the frequency enters as a multiple of the number in the, the B mode. Um, and on the top, we have the states that we, we found with the ladder operator. But there are certain advantages to uh, the states that we've introduced. Firstly, they resolve the identity. Uh, the states introduced in the states in equation two here cannot resolve the identity because clearly we cannot include projectors onto states with an odd number in the B mode. Um, and secondly, the states here in number two are, are not Get, that no ladder operator is given to generate them. And we can retroactively fit some ladder operator, but in, in my experience, I, we have to introduce these uh, terms such as the square root of one over uh, the number operator in B minus one. And these don't have, these aren't well defined outside of the representation. So. So I think, so the conclusion here being that the states we, we found here in equation number one um, are a more suitable generalization for the coherent states or SU2 type coherent states for the two one anisotropic oscillator. Um, also in terms of their classical correspondence, the, the states phi, phi nu, these are the states in the principal chain in the first chain, they, their probability distributions are concentrated on the spatial distribution of the classical 2 on anisotropic oscillator. And these are the two extreme uh, Lissajous figures where if we have a relative phase, 
between alpha and beta, we get the uh, typical figure of eight. Whereas if there is no relative phase between them, we get this sort of bow shape. And so in this sense as well, they are good candidates for coherent states of the, the two one oscillator. Yeah, so it's just a recap of what I just said. So the relative phase between alpha and beta determines the uh, whether we have a figure of eight or an open figure. And if we choose angles in between, it's uh, somehow a combination of these. And then we, we recover the two defining types of Lissajou curve for the two one oscillator, but in its qu quantum probability distribution. And yes, yeah, so the, this is a, a sense in which they are um, coherent states. Okay, uh, and the last property about the states that I will talk about are the uncertainties. So we can compute the uncertainty relations in the A and the B modes. And in terms of these normalization functions or equivalently the uh, pseudo Hermite polynomials, we, we find them to be uh, here. In the, in the A mode, it's given by this. And in the B mode, it's given by the bottom equation or inequality. Um, and so the, the, these by themselves don't really tell us a great deal other than that they do satisfy the uncertainty relation um but we can we can look at some pictures of how these look and so there are certain limits we can consider so just as a reminder the the ladder operator a plus has these coefficients alpha and beta and so if we consider some limit where alpha is much larger than beta and I, I use the absolute value of alpha because the um, these only depend on the absolute value, absolute values of alpha and beta. We see that somehow if we take alpha to be much larger than beta, um, the uncertainty in the A mode grows more more slowly than it does in the B mode. So even though these, these graphs look the same, the, the scale here is much smaller. And maybe the, the, the explanation's a bit hand wavy, but it, it, in a sense, it's that the mixing in of the A mode is relatively small compared to that of the B mode. So the uncertainty grows faster in the B mode than it does in the A mode. So, And we can take the, the converse limit where the absolute value of beta is much larger than alpha. And this, this is a, a, bit, a bit more interesting and perhaps a bit, bit more difficult to explain. Um, but clearly, if we take beta to be much larger than alpha, this mixing term here is much larger than alpha. Um, and so in a sense, uh, the A mode is, is dominant, but it's always mixed with this B mode. And uh, an attempt to explain this is that because of course, uh, one quantum in the A mode is in some sense in this average sense worth two quanta in the B mode, we only see a significant increase in the uncertainty in the A mode every two quanta. So if we have, for example, 10 here, when we add one quantum, the only way we can add one quantum to the system is to add a B quantum. It doesn't affect the uncertainty. And then only once we add another A one or another two, quant another two quanta, which corresponds to one A quantum, do we see a significant increase in the uncertainty. And in the B mode, um, I think this is perhaps uh, trickier to explain, but it seems that uh, if we consider the, 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 the degenerate contributing states to uh, any given uh, value of nu, there is, um, actually, I need to think how to explain this. Um, it, it, it's to do with, I think, the, the counting of the states in, uh, I'll go back to the back to the um, here. It's, I think it's to do with the fact that 
neighboring values even and odd values of uh, new have the same number of contributing states, but the odd value has a, a larger value in B. And this corresponds to the fact that for the odd values in the uncertainty graph I just showed, we have larger uncertainty when new is odd because we have a larger number in B, but the same number of states in its uh, expansion. I'm not sure if that's a um, very good explanation, but uh, so that's how we interpret this. So four has a, can, the state new, the state phi new where new is four has the same number of states in its expansion as the state phi new equals five. But, but the, the value, the number in the B mode is larger in the state new equals five. And so we have this behavior, but I think this behavior requires a little bit more thought. And then lastly, uh, I, we, I consider just alpha is equal to beta, set them both equal to one. And in this case, there's, essentially not much distinction between these two terms. And we find that the square of the product uncertainties is linear in the B mode, and it seems to be uh, parabolic in the A mode. Um, and lastly, I'll just uh, finish by making some remarks. So, we constructed a set of non-degenerate states for the 2-1 anisotropic oscillator. Um, and to do this, we introduced a ladder operator, specifically A plus, uh, big A plus, um, as, some, as a certain combination of the uh, one-dimensional operators, little a minus A plus, B minus B plus. And we chose by inspection, the simplest one we could. And the difference when considering the 2-1 oscillator versus the isotropic oscillator is that we, we can have, we can def define the action of A plus to be quite convenient, but then we lose the fact that uh, A minus or its Hermitian conjugate is a annihilation operator. So that's something that we, we lost from the isotropic case. And we found that the principal chain of states have a nice form, which generalized the SU2 coherent states of the isotropic oscillator. As well, we saw that these states uh, resolve the identity, which other quantum states for the 2-1 oscillator do not. And as well, they reproduce Lissajous figures in their spatial probability density in correspondence with the classical 2-1 oscillator. Um, and in terms of uh, what what could what needs to be done or what could be done? We can um, consider more general forms of these a plus. We know that the, for example, the generators of the symmetry for the degenerate energy levels are, are given by these a plus b minus squared or a minus b plus squared, and so we can we could imagine, for example, um, defining a more general I call it A tilde here, A tilde, um, to define more general nonlinear um, coherent states. But in principle, uh, finding the uh, binomial expansion or the expansion of A plus to the new becomes considerably more difficult. And of course, perhaps a more immediate extension is extending the idea to the PQ oscillator where P and Q are commensurate frequencies. Um, and so if, um, if uh, we can produce states like this, um, these would form a natural set of states. And if the properties of states uh, generated for the PQ oscillator in, in, in a similar vein follow anything like they do for the 2-1 oscillator, we I presume we would re recover a resolution of the identity and these features. But in, in, in practice, again, similarly to these nonlinear extensions I mentioned in this previous bullet point, finding the normal ordered expansion of this operator A plus is a bit more difficult 
though though it is possible in certain cases. Um, and lastly, I want, wanted to measure, mention that this, this idea of using ladder operators and by inspection finding operators which suitably connect the degenerate states um, is, is straightforward because of the spectrum. The spectrum is linear and it has a well understood symmetry and then the states that we construct or the, operate, the ladder operators that we construct follow quite straightforwardly from this. If on the other hand, uh, for example, this, the spectrum is quadratic, defining these A pluses and A minuses is not as straightforward if we insist on defining them in terms of the, the one dimensional um, ladder operators because, because of the, we can't predict with, with group symmetry, the degeneracy and the nth state, we, we cannot construct with the same ease these operators A plus. So if the spectrum is quadratic or not linear, it, it will require a little bit more thought. And I will I will finish, I'll finish there. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, James. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, questions? You can remet votre micro, you have a question. What, what would be the natural choice for the linear nonlinear term in the case of the PQ anamornicity, anisotropy? Um, well, I, I, I can show, I can say, for example, for the P1 anisotropy. Um, let me just go back to. So here it's A plus B minus. So if we actually generalize this power to P minus one, this does work. And I've Produce states for, for example, three one. But for the case of PQ, again, I think there is like more freedom in choosing these. If we insist that it's just the sum of two terms, and um, it could actually be a sum of more than two terms. Yeah, e even this could be a sum of more than two terms. But I, I guess it's just this idea of finding something that's simple enough to work. And and in this case, it does produce a result which seems to extend results for the isotropic case. So in the case of P1, the, the expression that where you generalize binomial coefficient with a T would, would simply change the T for the value of P or? Um, so that's- it, It's not that simple. And uh, I, I would say that for the case P equals three, it does change this value to three. Um, but I mean, you, we can conjecture that for the P1, it will just change this value to P, but actually proving it, actually computing the uh, normal ordered form of the expansion is difficult, but it is possible. And I, I think, and there are theorems, but I, I can produce it for P equals three, but maybe after that, there's a bit of just writing down the state and the operator, but not necessarily doing the expansion. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? No, I have a question, James. You you focus on the principal chain. What's mm -hmm. happening with the other ones? Um, that's also worth considering because we could construct these other chains of states for the corresponding to the zero modes, even for the isotropic case, but. Um, I guess that the point of their introduction was to give some meaning to A minus, so that A minus had some meaning when we go down the chain of states. I was, I think we're all always interested in the principal chain. Let me go to the uh, picture. But it's to give, give some meaning to A minus. Otherwise, the action of A minus is a, is, is a bit random, but at least these, we know that A minus eventually annihilates each of these zero modes. So it, I, I suppose it's to give meaning to A minus. I'm not sure if that's. Yep. Other question? No. No, alors, um, 
On remercie encore le conférencier. Merci, James. Thank you. Bravo. Thank you. Can leave the room, I think. Right, thank you. So I can.